Hey, it's James here from goodguitars.com, and in today's lesson, we're gonna talk about strumming without a pick. Now, a couple things before we begin. Um, if you're absolutely new to guitar, I do recommend using a very thin pick. Using your fingers to strum can get a little bit complicated. For the most part, using a pick just simplifies the whole process. It turns all of this, you know, there's like five things, your thumb and four fingers, turns it all into just one object so that your strumming arm just becomes one thing. It keeps it really, really simple. Now, the other thing is your nails. Whether your nails are short or long doesn't make much of a difference. I think this is easier with shorter nails, personally. Anyways, I'm gonna show you three ways to strum without using a pick. The first way is very, very simple. It goes like this. I call this one the pinch. And that's because I'm just pinching my first finger and my thumb together as if I'm holding a pick. So I take my first finger and I curve it a little bit and then I put the pad of my thumb down onto the joint and that's it. And now when I'm doing my downstroke, my fingernail rubs the string and on my upstroke, my thumbnail rubs the string. I'm just playing an E chord here. I want you to try this with me. We're just gonna do a few downstrokes on the E chord, rubbing our fingernail on the strings. Notice I'm rotating my wrist out a little at the end, just following through. That's useful once we start doing the upstrokes. Now we're gonna do some upstrokes. So for the upstroke, we're rubbing with our thumbnail and I have to angle my hand a bit in order to make that happen. If I keep my hand like this, the strings just kinda get caught between my thumb and the thumbnail. So I rotate my hand so that my thumbnail can graze the strings. Let's just try that a few times. And notice at the top how I do a rotation like that. That's to get ready to do another downstroke. We're not doing it yet, but it's good to get used to the motion now. It's like a scoop. And now we'll practice going down and then up. So on the way down, just watch this motion really slowly. I'll do it in slow motion. See how I'm rotating my wrist? I'm actually rotating my forearm and my wrist is really loose, and I'm just kind of letting gravity do its thing. On the way down, I graze the strings, and then I rotate near the end, and that sets it up so that my thumbnail gets a good angle, and then I rotate again. And I'm over-accentuating the motions, just so you can see what's going on. When you're actually strumming, it's a bit more subtle than that, but right now, while we're doing this nice and slow, I want you to just, you know, overdo it a little bit. Let's just try that, just going down and up nice and slow. Three and four and... Now let's try it a little bit quicker. Three and four and Be gentle, you know, just let gravity bring your arm down. You don't have to put force into it. You're grazing the strings with your fingers and just rotating. If it's giving you a bit of trouble, try just doing it in the air and just pretend you have a drop of water on the tips of your fingers there. You're pinching a drop of water and you're trying to get it off. You know, and just do that. Just wave your arm in the air in the same spot. Play some air guitar. I know it seems goofy, but this, this stuff actually kind of works. You know, and then you take that same concept and you just graze the strings. Who cares if it's kind of messy? It doesn't sound great. Focus on being loose. If you're too tight, your strumming might sound a bit too loud or abrasive. I notice that's a really common problem in people who come to me for help with strumming. And it takes a while, but just practice being loose first and foremost. 
And don't worry about it sounding perfect right away. Worry about how it feels to you. You know, that nice, loose, gentle feeling, just letting gravity carry your arm. See how my wrist kind of just flops and I'm rotating my arm up here? It's kind of that feeling. And one thing that this style of strumming with your hand is really, really good at is palm muting. You know, it's almost like you're using a pick. And overall, this style is very good with um, volume. You have a lot of dynamic control. You can get really quiet, and you can get really loud. And that leads us in to our next style, which I call the soft style. It goes like this. And this style has a very delicate sound. You know, if you're at a party and it's really loud, it's probably not gonna work out, but if you're in a quiet room, or if you have the opportunity to plug into an amp and just crank your volume a little bit, this style gives you a very relaxing and smooth strumming sound. We'll start off, once again, we're on an E chord. We're just gonna use our thumb for this. And we're just gonna rub the strings with our thumb, with the fleshy part. And we're just grazing the strings. And we can use our thumb for the downstrokes and the upstrokes. Just grazing it lightly on the upstrokes. Just try that a little bit to get used to it. Try not to get any nail in it. You just want to rub it with the side of your thumb. The downs are pretty easy, but the upstrokes might need a little bit of work. And we could try our common strumming pattern with that one. Down, down, up, up, down, up. It's a really small range of motion. Even when I'm doing strumming patterns, I don't want to do it that big. You can, but it really starts to wear down on your thumb. It'll like give you a blister. And that's the simplest way to do it, but we could also, for the upstrokes, use a finger. You know, so we go down with our thumb and up with our finger. And that way you're getting the fleshy part of your thumb on the way down and the fleshy part of your finger on the way up. And you could use one finger, two fingers, three fingers, all four, up to you. And when I go up, I kind of bend my fingers up a little bit. See that? So on the way down, my thumb muscle adds to the motion, and on the way up, my fingers add to the motion. I like doing this with just one finger, to be honest. Even though you could do more, I feel that that's the cleanest, the nicest. And when we're practicing this, or pretty much any strumming, there's a really, really important concept that I learned, I was lucky to learn this early on. It's that you wanna separate volume from speed. You know, we all have a natural tendency, as we go faster, we wanna go louder. And as we get slower, we wanna get quiet. But you wanna separate that. You wanna be able to go fast and quiet, or slow and loud. A really simple exercise to help you do this, just pick a chord, pick a strumming pattern, start off as quiet as you can go. And then slowly try to get louder without going any faster. You could use a metronome to help you check. Get to your maximum volume and then come down again. And another thing you can do is to try to play a strumming pattern as fast as you can and as soft as you can. So, you know, a lot of it, sometimes it, you, got, you can't help it. It just gets louder and louder. And you're like, oh, so you practice getting it soft. You might have to slow down a bit to go soft. As far as the dynamic range is concerned, the soft style doesn't get super loud. So to help you out with that, this is my favorite style. I call it fingernails style. You know, I just make up stupid names for this stuff, right? But I'll show you how it's done. This is pretty much the opposite of what we just did. Here, we're gonna be using our fingernails. This style gives you the biggest dynamic range 
going from soft all the way to super loud. It gives you the most control over which strings you're hitting. And because of that, it blends really well with finger style. So, you know, if you ever come across a song that has some finger style elements with some strumming elements, this is gonna take you there. So for the soft style, we were going down with our thumb and up with our fingers. Now we're gonna reverse that. We're gonna go down with our fingers and up with our thumb. And that ensures that we get nail contact every time. Let's work on a few down strokes. This is the tricky part of this one. We gotta figure out how to line up our fingers so that they hit the strings in a nice way and give us a nice rich sound. I'm playing an E chord here and I'm gonna be doing down strokes with these three fingers. I start off by kind of lining them all up. You could even put them on your guitar so they make a straight line and you hold them together like that. Bent all your fingers. And I open them up near the end. So I'm opening them up into the strings with a nice big range of motion. It's really important with this one. So all our fingers are contacting the strings at the same time. Just practice that. Go through them quickly, slowly. And when you do it slowly, you can hear the strings going like bring. When you do it quick, it all sounds like one thing. And my hand is loose for this. You know, the with the pinch one, I was like squeezing those together, but here, same sort of thing, but my hand's loose. And for the upstrokes, I'm just using my thumbnail, just like we did with the pinch technique. And you'll notice, as you go from a downstroke to an upstroke, your hand kind of naturally comes together and that gives your thumb a bit of reinforcement so that it can keep up with the volume of all your fingers. But my hand is super loose. I'm rotating at the forearm and just letting my wrist move with gravity flopping around like that. I'm not like squeezing or putting my fingers in any way. They just kind of open up naturally with gravity as I do a downstroke. And they kind of naturally catch my thumb on the way up. So the key here is to use your nails as much as possible and to have your wrist and forearm control the angle of your hand. You don't want to get too much tension here. You want to let these parts take care of that and just be loose and let your fingers fall through the strings. You know, that's why strumming with a pick is a little bit easier. It's because you don't have to worry about any of that. But when you're contacting the guitar with your hand, you have to turn this into part of your instrument, you know, and if it's too tight, It's just hard to keep a consistent volume, to keep a smooth sound. You know, the difference is subtle, but it's there. So just a quick review, we went over three styles of strumming with your bare hand. The first style, we pinch, and we use our finger on the way down, our thumb on the way up, and we're rotating our wrist to help with the angle. The second style was just using our thumb to play nice and soft, just using the fleshy part. And we can use our finger for the upstroke if we like. And the final style that we did revolved around using our fingernails. Fingernails down, thumbnail up. And that doesn't cover everything, but those are kind of the foundational techniques behind this whole thing. So I hope this helps you get started strumming without a pick. Uh, obviously you can take this way further and get into some really cool stuff, blending it with finger picking. And you know, combining these techniques to make more techniques and get different sounds. That's the really cool thing about a real instrument like guitar, as opposed to like, um, you know, a digital instrument where you're just restricted to the sounds that come out when you press the buttons. Whereas like with a guitar, you know, you hold it just a millimeter differently or do something just a tiny bit differently and all of a sudden you're in completely new territory. You know, you've made something new. And that's amazing. That's why I love guitar, right? The possibilities are endless. And um, if you need some help, 
reaching you know the point where you want to be with guitar i have a bunch of resources designed to help you out with that uh, i have links to all those down below there's my free ebook my complete beginners course for complete beginners my bar chords course and i'm working on a few other intermediate level courses to you know help you go beyond the basics all in all i hope this helped and uh, if you have any comments questions let me know in the comments down below i'll see you next time